go, go through the pitch. Headspin is a digital experience AI platform, right? Um, and everything that we do at Headspin is all real devices with real SIM cards. There's no jailbreaking, no routing. So these are all plain vanilla Android and iOS devices sitting in different parts of the world. Right? So there, there are four main pieces which constitute Headspin. So let's go through this quick uh, slide, which will kind of quickly summarize what we do at Headspin. So these are the four main pillars which constitute Headspin. First of all, global device infrastructure. So Headspin, we have uh, presence in 65 plus countries and 100 plus locations globally. So these are all real devices with real SIM cards, um, non-jailbroken, non-routed. And the most interesting thing is that there is no SDK required to access any of these devices. Second part is automation. So this whole platform was built for automation. And um, we support a whole bunch of open source automation frameworks. So this includes Appium, Selenium, Expresso, XC test, and so on. And um, there are a whole bunch of REST APIs which are built into it to support this kind of seamless and smooth integration. And this is where the traditional device cloud stop, uh, right? And everything after here is all what Headspin is very different and unique compared to anything else in the market. So this is performance, uh, wherein uh, the same functional test that you're running now can start capturing a whole bunch of performance metrics where you can start all the way from a user experience issue to go all the way up to uh, method level details and packets. So we'll see that in more detail in our uh, demo. So once you start capturing all these metrics for each and every test, now what do you do with that? So now you aggregate all the data and start visualizing with beautiful dashboards wherein you can now start creating thresholds and getting and start getting alerts from on Slack, email, HipChat, anything that you're using, right? And this is how, um, um, if you go to one of our data center, this is how um, uh, the box will look like. It's called a P box or a proxy box or a phone box. And this is where all the secret sauce is, wherein uh, there's a custom Linux server or a Mac mini connected through a custom USB hub. And we just plug in all the devices here. And this tray goes into this box. And once you connect all the devices, everything else is controlled through a remote control uh, UI on the web. Uh, there are different ways in which you can access um, Headspin. Uh, which is on-prem, cloud, or you can use a combination of both on-prem or cloud. On-prem is when you host the box and um, is managed um, by, uh, by, by you um, in your office. And if we host the box and maintain it, the box for you, then it is uh, cloud. So from a product perspective, there's literally no difference. Uh, depends on just... Who is, who is managing and uh, where is the box sitting. So that's kind of on a high level of what we uh, do at Headspin. Uh, let's jump into the demo itself. So once you uh, get access to the platform, depending on the locations and devices that you subscribe to, you'll see them in the account. Uh, so these are some of the locations and devices that I have in my account. Um, so let's say if I want to access a device in Delhi, I just click on this uh, flag. And now this is a real device, Samsung device that is sitting in uh, Delhi. And this is running a local SIM card, Airtel, and um, is running Android 10. Now, how do we access this device? Very simple. Just click on start and you get remote control access to this device in Delhi. Now, once you get remote control access, it's pretty much like a device that is there in your hand. You can interact with it remotely. Um, install apps from the Play Store, or you can upload pre-release builds through the UI, right? And uh, you can also bring these remote devices local to your laptop by just copy pasting the string on your terminal. Um, so this is an IP that you have built to, uh, it's called USB over IP to bring remote devices local to your laptop. And on the dashboard, this is where you pick up your automation config. Very simple, just chain. And um, one thing which is very worth mentioning here is that you can just change the web driver URL as long as you're using open source Appium. Just change the configuration and the update the capabilities. Now you can start running all your automation scripts on Headspin very quickly. 
And the other interesting part is that uh, the co-founders of Appium, uh, Jonathan Libs, uh, they're all Headspin employees, uh, and uh, we run a university along with Jonathan to teach people the best-in-class automation. And we are very, very tightly coupled with the community. So um, anything new that goes into Appium, so we also push it to the community. So that way, you can say that uh, Headspin is an open platform, meaning you can write new scripts with Headspin and then take it and run it anywhere else. And you can bring the existing scripts um, and just change configuration and start running it on Headspin. So that way, we are an open platform. Screenshots, this is where you take screenshots, access to logs, file system, and then access to the hardware keys on the device. Another interesting thing is mini remote, uh, which is this is a, another key differentiator and a very loud feature among other customers. Uh, the reason this is interesting is um, cloud testing is kind of challenging, as we all know, right, on cloud devices, um, because someone has to get used to the, um, the, the mouse clicks compared to a touch and swipe. So what happens when you just scan this QR code is the entire screen gets mirrored onto my local device. And now all act any action that I perform on my local phone gets translated onto this remote device. Right now, if you see my mouse pointer is on the right hand side. And now as and when I'm doing any action on the remote on my local phone, they are getting translated onto the remote device. Pretty cool, right? So that's about Android. And let's split, let's quickly look at iOS as well. Very similar. Uh, let's pick another location. This is uh, iPhone XR in Coimbatore. Let's click on start, like how we did with Android. And this is running Vodafone SIM card. This is the phone number for the device. So you can do all sorts of um, OTP based login, get an uh, SMS, uh, all sorts of use cases uh, which a real end user would go through. So now very similar to Android, you can also interact with the device remotely, um, install apps from the App Store, upload pre-release builds, uh, automation config, screenshots, and then access to the hardware keys on the device. And similar to Android, you can also bring this remote iOS device local to your laptop, local on your phone. So that's uh, iOS. And moving on to the next one, which is uh, performance or session capture. So this is a very, very key differentiator to what we do at Headspin and a very loud feature among all our customers. So let's understand the geography of this report and then deep dive into what is happening here. So this is a, a session performance session for Wish. It's an e-commerce app, very popular in North America. So this is a test when they were trying to launch in Mexico. And here is a complete video recording for the test. All the logs are captured here in one place. So there's video, all the logs, which is H Harmar and CSV. These are HTTP archives. Um, this You can go deeper, look at packet level information. So there's PCAP and SL key log to decrypt it. And as you scroll down, this is your what? Uh, these are all your system level metrics, right? As you scroll down, this is your waterfall UI, basically an X-ray vision into the app, telling you all the network requests that were made by the app for this particular test. And as you hover on the waterfall, if you see the video on the right hand side, it's tied to the uh, waterfall. Uh, we are going to the uh, the process where we are look, signing in, searching for an item, browsing through the item, adding it to the cart, and then going to checkout. Pretty standard e-com test case, right? Now, once this test is completed, there is our AI engine, which basically analyzes all this data and spits out all the issues that are there in the app on the left-hand side. So these are a combination of user experience and network performance issues. So let's look at one of them, loading animation. So this is a user experience issue. And the yellow bars are basically telling you that these are areas of poor user experience. How do I know that? When I hover on this yellow region, if you see the video on the right hand side, it's basically a blank screen or there is a spinner. And the app is basically unusable by the user for this particular time period. And if you see closely, there's a bubble on top telling you that there was an impact of six seconds, meaning this user was basically waiting for six seconds for this app to be interactable. Now that we were able to find this area of poor user experience with Headspin, now we want to understand, right? So what was happening in this particular six second time interval? It's very simple. Now I'll just zoom into this region. 
and look at all the network requests that were made by the app in this particular time interval. So these are all the network requests that were made by the app. And uh, we break it down further into four colors here, TCP, TLS, first byte time and time to download the request. When you click on each one on the right hand side, you'll see the details of the request. It's doing a TCP connection on this IP on the port, time for TCP connection, TLS connection. And when you click on this, it will take you to the real request. It's a post request to wish.com. And this was a 200 OK response. But it spent 500 odd milliseconds waiting on the server to get just 1.57 kilobyte response. And if you see, the green bars are on a higher side for this particular host compared to the other. So majority of the requests are coming from these two uh, hosts. right? So, But the green bars are on a higher side for this particular host. 500 milliseconds, 500 odd milliseconds, two seconds, and so on. Now the question is, if we try to extrapolate this and see if this is something in general to do with the host, uh, it's very simple, zoom out and look at it from a high level, from a host per se, wish.com 443. So now in total, there were like 100 requests and majority of the time was spent waiting on the server to get a response. So that's like 39 seconds. Now this could be for a few reasons, right? Either the server is overloaded, Maybe the load balancer is not behaving correctly. Or maybe the users are geographically farther away from where this API server is actually located. So now let's go one step back and see what just happened is we just ran a simple functional test. And we were able to find these areas of poor user experience. And we were also able to find what could be the reasons why these are happening. Now, apart from this, we capture the entire snapshot of the system. Uh, uh, there is frames per second, number of concurrent requests, download speed, HTTP throughput that you're getting on the network, uh, CPU usage, memory consumption, disk IO, battery drain, and so on. Now, when the QA team finds an issue, just, just come here, create a label on top of this, and say this is a UI issue. Um, it's going to make this a uh, payment failure. And it'll appear on the timeline. And you can now just copy this and paste it in your ticket. So when a developer looks at it, he knows exactly what to look for. And um, now he can also come back and uh, do the same root cause analysis that we just did and also replay the entire test execution. All right. Uh, so uh, this is for one device, one network, one test, right? But let's take an example how people use this in production. So typically, when uh, when you when you run a regression test suite, so there are um, let's say there are like thousand test cases, which is not very uncommon. So let's say there are thousand test cases in today's world. When you run a regression test suite of let's say thousand test cases, um, optimistically, let's say ten percent of those test cases fail. So uh, now there are 100 failures. So what? So based on that, now what we are going to look at, the QA team has to now look at, shift through the logs, correlate to the screenshots, or maybe a video if you try using some of these other um, vendors. That's about it, right? Um, now, fast forward, let's say you're running, you plug this into your CI pipeline. Uh, and now constantly there are you're running your regression every time there's a new code that is checked in 100 failures 100 failures they just keep adding up right already it was so cumbersome and now imagine what this happens when this when you plug this into a ci pipeline just totally goes out of control right now uh, we have heard from customers time and again that no one really looks at those failures um because uh, it doesn't make sense because who is going to sift through the logs, correlate to the screenshots and the video and see what happened. Um, so it's not really ideal. Fast forward today to Headspin, what our customers do is they enable session capture or performance capture, which is a simple Appium or a Selenium capability. So once you do that, all these thousand tests will have performance sessions attached to it, which looks something like this. 10% of them that fail, you just click on those 100 sessions, see what exactly happened, where did the test case fail, just create a label, Copy this and paste it in your ticket. As simple as that. Again, taking the same example, plugging into a CI pipeline, 100 failures, they just keep adding up. There are hundreds and thousands of these sessions again. Doesn't make sense to look at 
each one of those sessions and the whole point of this uh, report is is lost so for that what we said is you know this data is so powerful what if we could create a data pipeline out of it so what we do is we basically ingest all the data from each of these sessions and create a data pipeline um and in the and basically which is basically a postgres sql data database and now you can build all these beautiful dashboards so this is an example from thomson and reuters where they're essentially running their tests across multiple platforms android ios mobile web and so on now in their scripts they're capturing these key kpis that they really care about like time to launch the app time to search for a stock value time to log in and so on now let's say for example the time to search on ios on an average is like 3 seconds and now you can set up a threshold of let's say 4 seconds now here is where it's again very different and unique is now when again when the kpi when the time to search goes above 4 seconds now you get a, you can set up an alert on slack email hip chat anything that you're using now when you get an alert now this is not uh, an alert uh, any random alert right so this is a alert that you get exactly when that particular kpi shot up now this alert will have a link to this session when you click on it it will take you to that exact test where that particular kpi shot up now of course you have the video recording you have all the logs that are captured in one place and uh, also uh, so this is the video all the logs that are captured here in one place and because this was automation so you'll have automation logs device logs and the entire system level view and along with this the ai engine which is doing analysis on top of each of these sessions now you just come the qa team now just come here uh, clear the label on top of this and copy this and paste it in the ticket and one step we can go for one step further once you kind of know the optimal values for each one of these dashboards so you can straight away start creating tickets out of the alerts that you get from the platform so that's the kind of tight integration that you can build with your ci pipeline I think that's pretty much what I had uh, 